Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining me again today as we continue to explore this philosophy of pet health from a natural perspective. We are erasing the claims made by these pet food companies that their dry food and their low quality wet food with their synthetic vitamins are in fact a true and complete healthy diet for our pets because all evidence suggests the opposite. I am here today as always with my trusty sidekick Khaleesi the hairless dog. You may hear her licking herself there and scratching. Yes you're doing that aren't you? Anyway today we are starting a new series where each of these videos in this series there will be a playlist will be devoted to things that we can add to our pets commercial foods to make those foods more nutritious more digestible and to make sure that our animals are getting all of the nutrition their bodies need from actual food and at the same time hopefully cutting back on some of the toxic elements which are absolutely loaded in these commercial pet foods. Today, the number one video in this series is the number one thing I like to add to all my cat and dog food, or to, to the diets of my cats and dogs regularly, and that is, of course, sardines. Anyone who has ever talked to me about nutrition probably knows that my motto is sardines on everything. Of course, I don't actually put sardines on everything, but I do like to say that to stress how utterly important I think they are in the diet. This goes for people, too. Don't forget my background is in anthropology, archaeology, and sardines. They sustained entire populations of human beings living in the far north during ice age glacial conditions on this planet. So we know that sardines must have a powerful, powerful set of nutrients to offer. Not only that, but sardines are also a sustainable food source, and it just so happens that they don't have the problems with toxicity, such as mercury and radioactive elements that much other sources of seafood will, like tuna for instance is something that I avoid specifically because of those toxins. But sardines, because they exclusively eat plankton, are outside of this whole network of uh, toxins being shared all throughout the ocean when one fish eats another. Also, sardines are very young, so they don't have time to accumulate. But plankton, their source of food, turns out is the most nutritious thing on the planet and that is the secret to why sardines themselves are so nutritious now before I talk about why I like sardines so much I want to first mention which sardines I buy because it turns out sardine is not a fish Sardines are something like 15 different species of fish that get labeled as sardines and sold in cans. But they do have things in common. They are all small, oily. And those oils are extremely important because those oils are the omega-3 fats, EPA and DHA, the long chain that are all practically missing in the diet so we want those oils in those fish 
But, like I said, not all sardines are the same. So, I want to mention that I specifically avoid any sardines from the Pacific Ocean. And usually, if you read the packaging, those are usually caught off the coast of China or somewhere over off around Asia. So I avoid those sardines always. And I always look for sardines from the high Atlantic um, specifically Norway, those are the bristling sardines, they're very small, uh, from Poland, those are ones I don't mind, and sometimes I do like the ones from the Mediterranean, uh, near Sardinia, where sardines get their name, and those I actually think are the tastiest, and they have the darkest pigments, lots of fat-soluble nutrients in there. But generally speaking, I like the bristling sardines or the ones I get from Aldi, which are the cheapest I can find, come from Poland, and I find that acceptable. Those are the ones I give my pets most often. Sardines are often packaged in many different substances. I only ever buy water and olive oil. Extra virgin olive oil, if possible. I avoid soybean oil, vegetable oils, cottonseed oil, uh, mustard, tomato sauce. Uh, if you want some in tomato sauce or mustard for yourself, that's fine. But for our pets, water or olive oil. Now on to the meat of this video. Sorry for the bad joke there. And that is, of course, the nutrition found in these babies. These sweet, sweet little fishy babies. I love them so much. When I was a kid, I would not touch any seafood. I hated all seafood. But when I got older, I started learning about nutrition. And I knew that I wanted this nutrition. So I trained myself to like sardines. I ate them over and over again, even though I thought they were gross. And now my body craves them. I love them, and I love for my pets to get them, and I always recommend that my clients give them to their pets. So what's so great in there? Well, we mentioned the omega-3s. That's something you're not going to find in any commercial pet food, really. Why? Well, two reasons. One... All those pet foods use industrial farmed meats. Industrial farmed animals are fed things like grain, corn, wheat, and soy, the USDA subsidized grains. And those are very low in omega-3s and extremely high in omega-6. So those animals' bodies don't accumulate the omega-3s. So you don't get them. If you eat grass-fed, pasture-raised, or feed those to your animals, there will be omega-3s in there. But not in industrial farmed meats, which you better believe all pet food is, unless specifically stated otherwise. The other reason, sometimes pet foods have salmon, and salmon does have omega-3s. But you better believe that that is farmed salmon, not wild salmon, which is it incredibly high in toxins and much less nutrient dense than the wild counterparts but the thing is those pet foods are cooked at high temperatures for long periods of time specifically dry food and these omega-3 fats are the least heat stable of all fats they do not tolerate heat well so if you're buying a salmon dry food for your pet thinking that they're getting those omega-3s, you have to think again. We want to get these in an unprocessed form. These fats are specifically associated with cold water. These things are extremely stable and useful at cold temperatures but they do not tolerate heat or processing. They become oxidized. They become rancid. 
and at some point they can even become carcinogenic and poisonous. So, we should try to avoid fats that have been heated past the point of being stable and try to get these always in whole food forms, unprocessed. Fish oils and capsules and things are often processed and they become oxidized if they're not fresh. So, sardines, so valuable for those fats. Those fats are vital for the brain. They are vital for the cardiovascular system, for the immune system, and for the structural integrity of every single cell membrane in the body. And these are lacking in the modern food supply. And they are even more lacking in our pets' foods. And it just so happens that that's not the only nutrient in sardines that are incredibly lacking and deficient in our food supply. Another one that's in there is B12. Extremely high levels of B12 in sardines. Pretty much everyone is deficient in B12. And our pets, since their food is even more processed than ours, also have these problems. Vitamin D. High concentrations of vitamin D in these fish. That is another nutrient everyone seems to be deficient in. That is another nutrient that is just vital for all systems in the body. For keeping cancer away have a proper immune system we need vitamin D B12 so important for energy the body can't metabolize energy the body doesn't work chronic conditions start um, selenium it's an important nutrient that's also in there it's in the skin phosphorus you find phosphorus in there uh, you also want it with the bones so you get all of the minerals, the calcium, the magnesium, potassium, that's all in sardines. And not only are these things all deficient in the diet, but these are a lot of these are also the cofactors needed for the proper metabolism of minerals, for the proper usage of calcium in the body. The body needs these other nutrients. It needs the vitamin D. It needs the phosphorus. It needs the magnesium. And vitamin C is also on that list, which you are not getting from sardines. But we will be talking about how to get more vitamin C into your pet system in future of these videos. You better believe that. But since our animals, cats and dogs, are carnivorous, then... I wanted to start with sardines because these are the nutrients that their bodies would have been getting from eating prey animals, from wild prey animals. These are the nutrients their bodies have been dependent on since time immemorial, since long before they were ever domesticated, since long before human beings even existed, these are the nutrients that were keeping these animals healthy so that they would, were able to thrive up until the present day when the modern food supply kicked in and dry food was invented and now there is a culture of ill health. That is not coincidence that those two go hand in hand. It is not coincidence that dry food and disease in pets have been rising at the same rate. We need to get back to the nutrients that kept these animals thriving in nature, in wild, harsh environments. Also, another reason why sardines are more important, or the nutrients in sardines are more important for uh, dogs and cats than vitamin C rich foods is because dogs and cats bodies are able to produce vitamin C on their own 
Vitamin C is essential to human beings, but dogs and cats can produce it. So we do want to focus more on getting these fat solubles in there and these specific fats. Sardines on everything. At least three days a week, make sure your animals are getting this nutrition. I cannot stress it enough. The nutrients in sardines are so important for the health of our animals and they are so lacking in the dry and wet commercial pet foods. This video is starting to run long. I'm going to end it now with a recap. Sardines. I avoid the ones caught from China or off the coast of Asia. I don't want any fish near Japan. I look for things from Norway, Poland, the high Atlantic, Canada can be all right. Um, nutrients in there that are lacking elsewhere. Long chain omega-3s, B12, selenium, CoQ10, phosphorus, uh, lots of minerals, selenium, I'm not sure if I mentioned that yet, uh, and, and so much more fat soluble pigments and I guarantee there's all kinds of things that have not been discovered by science yet science the science of nutrition is still in its infancy we do not know everything always best to defer to nature's wisdom over man's arrogance and I will leave you with that thought today I will have the next video in this segment up soon Khaleesi and I wish you all the best. Until next time.